Kubernetes development can be an interesting experience. And that's a nice way of me saying it can be challenging. If your main focus is actually building an application, the last thing you want to have is your time consumed by creating, configuring, and optimizing, and debugging the Kubernetes cluster. You also want an efficient way of building, testing, and deploying your cloud-native apps without getting bogged down by DevOps workflow intricacies just to see the results of the work that you're busy with. So I want to show you a combination of Rancher Desktop and Scaffold that can make your development workflow easier and more efficient. So Rancher Desktop is a fully-fledged Kubernetes cluster, but is very lightweight, easy to install, and get running. It gives you a single node cluster out of the box and updates your kubeconfigs context to connect to the RD cluster. And you can do a bunch of cool things with it, like easily update your Kubernetes version from the GUI or undergo a hard reset of the cluster with the click of a button. And Scaffold is also aimed at simplifying the Kubernetes development workflow by automating and abstracting away the process of building and deploying container images for you. You can use it to create continuous delivery pipelines for your local development as well as production grade. And Scaffold will work with the current context, which is Rancher Desktop in my case. And this is a really sweet flow if you're trying to find an efficient way of building cloud-native applications on your machine and eventually target some production environment. So the first step is to make sure that Rancher Desktop is up and running. And as you can see, I have it open over, over here. And if I head over to the settings, you can have a look at what I'm working with, the particular Kubernetes version I'm using. In addition to that, the amount of memory and CPU that I have allocated. And all of this you can easily uh, modify. And this really simplifies um, you working with a Kubernetes cluster. And granted, the best thing would be to get as close as possible to what you're going to have in production. But there's certainly a huge help if you can minify things um, to, make, to make it suitable for your local development, but still get a real feel because you're still working with a Kubernetes cluster to begin with, and this will help accelerate your development and just really take away a lot of the complexities working with a GUI. And as I mentioned, if you, needed, if you need to do a hard reset, you can do that with the click of a button over here as well. So I'm going to head over uh, to my terminal, and um, this is where my application uh, lives at the moment. And so I'm going to initialize a scaffold project. And I'm going to specify that I want to make use of the Docker file that lives in my application and the build packs. I'm using a package.json file, and then it will print out what the initial configuration file is going to look like. Um, for starters, and bear in mind, you can always modify this depending on your needs. And you'll notice over here that under the deploy section, it detected a manifest.yaml file that I have inside of my directory. And you can generate these um, in the terminal as well, just providing it with the relevant flag. But I'll show you what my manifests look like, um, and I prefer to go with this approach instead. So once it has done that, it will also show you the commands that you can then run. Uh, scaffold run would be to build and deploy one soft, which is great um, in your fully fledged pipeline. But for development purposes, as you can see over here, scaffold dev, scaffold dev rather is more than suitable. So if I head over to the editor, so you can just have a look at this application to see what it looks like. And you'll see over here, this is a Node.js application, and it has a single root um, with the path over here for test as the endpoint, and it'll return simple Node app working. If I head over to manifests, you'll see that I have a deployment configuration as well as a service configuration. And I only want one replica at this particular point in time uh, for my pod. So I'm only going to have one running. And um, this will be built, this application will be built and deployed to Rancher Desktop, which is my current, uh, con my current context for my Kubernetes configuration. And Scaffold will be able to automatically detect that as well as uh, push the application to the relevant place. So what I'm going to do now is run scaffold dev, and it will go through the build and deployment process. And once that is done, I will then be able to continue with development and any of my changes will be detected by scaffold and it will automatically go through this process again. And I'll be able to see those changes reflected in the cluster. But for starters, let's see if we can get that test endpoint working. And as you can see, uh, my application is successfully deployed. And from now on, Scaffold is actually just waiting for any new changes so it can go through that process again. And so I'm in my browser over here. I'm just going to refresh that so that you can see that the application is working as expected with that particular um, path. But what I want to do now is actually add another root over here. I'm just going to copy and paste that. 
and we'll call this orders. Have that be cow million plush. Save those changes and scaffold will detect that. And as you can see over here, it's now going through the entire process again. And then we'll test that to see if it's working in our cluster. Great, so the last thing to do is to head over to the browser. I'm gonna go to orders. And there we go, we get Calmelian plush. These tools complement each other and are ultimately aimed at enabling developers to focus on their applications by giving you a simplified approach to working with a Kubernetes environment and deploying to it. RD gives you the lightweight and simplified approach to working with a cluster and Scaffold optimizes your development workflow with your cluster. If you're interested in learning more about optimizing cloud-native developer workflows, be sure to join the Susan Rancher Community Network and check out the Accelerator Dev Workflows class.